Hello, you're watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the major stories from around the world. Let's take a look at the headlines. Outrage in UK as ferry company fires 800 workers. Feminist movements reject Ecuadorian president's partial veto of abortion bill. And women workers face increasingly precarious conditions in Brazil. Our first story is from the United Kingdom, where PO Ferries has reportedly fired nearly 800 workers. Following the announcement, the union's Nautilus International and the National Union of Rail, Maritime and Transport Workers, or RMT, asked the workers not to leave the ferries. Morningstar quoted the RMT as saying that some of the workers had been evicted after being handcuffed. Following these developments, massive protests took place along way across various ports on Friday. The decision has been widely condemned across the political spectrum as well, with various ministries writing to P&O. At the same time, the government is also being criticised after reports emerged that it knew of the company's decision but had not done anything about it. P&O Ferries is one of the country's major companies. It transported over 10 million passengers a year before the pandemic and about 15% of all freight cargo that came in and out of the country. In our next story, on March 15th, Conservative Ecuadorian President Guillermo Lasso partially vetoed a bill that allowed women and girls to access abortions when pregnancy was a result of rape. Lasso alleged that the content of the bill did not entirely correspond to the Constitutional Court's ruling that decriminalized the determination of pregnancy in such cases. The initiative approved by the National Assembly on February 17th permitted abortions up to 12 weeks of gestation for most adult women, with an extension of up to 18 weeks for minors and women in rural areas. The expansion of time limit for indigenous and rural women was intended to give them more time to find medical assistance because access to healthcare is unequal between urban and rural areas and between different social classes. Meanwhile, the prolongation of the deadline for minors was aimed at giving them appropriate time to identify pregnancy. Nevertheless, Lasso suggested unifying the deadline at 12 weeks for all without exception. Feminist movements and women's rights organizations vehemently rejected the executive decision and his reasons to partially veto the bill. They have vowed to continue fighting for reproductive rights. Feminist organization Surkuna rejected the presidential veto and said that it promotes inequity and inequality and condemns rape survivors to clandestine torture and forced motherhood. Legislator Johanna Moreira said that imposing short deadlines would only affect the poorest and most forgotten causing women to lose their lives due to clandestine abortions. Ecuador allows abortions only when a woman's life is at risk due to pregnancy and when the pregnancy is a result of a rape of a woman with mental illness. In all other cases, it is punishable with up to two years in prison for women who receive abortions and up to three years for health providers who perform abortions. And finally, we look at the impact of Brazil's ongoing economic crisis on women. The country has recorded a sharp rise in the prices of necessities, including cooking gas and transport. Meanwhile, the minimum wage adjustment for 2022 stands at 10.2%, which is lower than the rate of inflation. At the end of 2021, Brazil's unemployment rate stood at around 11% or 12 million people. A major portion of the people who lost their jobs are women, who are also overrepresented in informal jobs. The data shows that an estimated 8.6 million women exited the workforce between the third quarter of 2019 and 2020. According to economist Isabella Mendes, women's earnings are 75% of what a non-black man earns. Black women are paid only 47% of what a white man earns. Here is a video by Brazil de Fato on the precarity faced by women in Brazil. When it comes to the economy in Brazil, the ends don't meet. For the year 2022, the federal government announced an increase in the minimum wage below the inflation rate recorded in 2021. And how has this rise in prices impacted women? Everything is too expensive. Every day you go to the supermarket, we have a surprise. Vegetables and fruits, another surprise. And let's not talk about the meat price. Once Luciani works making cakes on demand, she buys an average of two cooking gas cylinders every month. And that was precisely one of the villains of the household budget, presenting a price adjustment of 36.99% last year. The unemployment rate skyrocketed. 11.1%. Most of the unemployed people in the country are female. The situation of being in lower paid jobs and or informal jobs makes women more vulnerable. There are several studies on women's autonomy and on violence against women pointing out that the situation of financial insecurity that women are in is a factor that makes them continue in relationships with violent partners, in abusive relationships. We know that the expenses increased because the price of everything increased. So we want the government to look at us with empathy. We want them to care for us. We want the government to care for our health and transportation. 
This letter has been more expensive each time, but we see no improvement. But what can women expect for the near future? To Isabella Mendes, the perspectives are not exciting. In order to get out of this all, we must rethink the project of the country we want, because we know that these are complex issues. Improving women's lives demands the coordination of many public policies that can only be conceived within the scope of a broader project. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram.